Hello, I'm Bruce Cheney, and today in Homemade Science, I want to take a look at making some color shadows and also talk a little bit about color mixing. Now, this can be a fun activity for kids to try, and it's also a good way to learn some properties of light. So let's get started. We'll try this with a couple different light sources, LED flashlights. These are LED lights that operate on 110 volts. And then I have these small finger lights, which are also LED lights. The LED flashlights operate on three AA batteries. They're adjustable from a very fine point to a very large pattern. And they come in three colors, blue, green, and red. I made adjustable holders for each flashlight out of a wooden block and some wire. There we go. To make the colored shadows, I simply position the flashlights at different angles and broadcast them up onto the wall. Let's start out with just two cards, the green and the blue, and that's gonna give me cyan. Standing in front of it, I get black, blue, and green shadows depending on what lights I'm blocking. Adding red and blue light gives me a magenta. You can see my magenta, my red, and my blue. I mix my red and green together, I get a yellow. So of course in this one where I block the red light, I see green shadows, and where I block the green light, I see red shadows. In this shot, my camera is a bit out of focus, but if I position the red, green, and blue correctly, I can match a color wheel, which shows me all the color mixing. With all these lights on, I can see white, and in the shadows I have black, which is blocking all the light. I have red, I have green, I have blue, I have yellow, I have magenta, and cyan. The screw and bulbs have a remote that goes along with it, which is gonna allow me to get several different colors out of each bulb. However, the quality isn't quite as good as the flashlights. Now I'll set these up the same way and then use the remote to change the color of the individual bulbs. My third set of lights that I use are called finger lights. They do come in a variety of colors, but once again, we're gonna use green, red, and blue. These lights also have holders. It's simply made from a block of wood and some wire, and it's fully adjustable. And there we go. Now to try this investigation in the classroom or at home, you can simply make a small theater Aim the lights into the box at different angles, and then wave something in front of it, and once again we get colored shadows. Or if you can find some type of wind-up toy or battery-operated toy, you could put that in there, and let it make the colored shadows. Now, so far we've been looking at adding light together, but we can also break it down using a prism, or better yet, looking at the light source with these prism glasses. <laughs> In the 16th century, Sir Isaac Newton began a series of experiments with sunlight and prisms, 
and he demonstrated that clear white light was composed of seven visible colors. Newton also found that the separated cars could go into a second prism and reform back into white light. Like the prism, the surface of these glasses can also separate light into seven colors of the rainbow. We can see them here looking at white light. However, Newton found that once the light was broken down to an individual wavelength, it couldn't be broken down any further. Red light going into a prism comes out as red light, and the same would be true for all the other individual wavelengths. As we switch back and forth through the individual colors, we see only that color appears in the glasses. We could look at a variety of different light sources, but don't look directly at the sunlight, it could hurt your eyes. Here's sunlight reflected in a pool of water. Here's some fluorescent lights. And here's candlelight. Instead of separating the wavelengths, we can look at blocking them by using filters or dyes. Here we see food coloring added to water blocking out all the other wavelengths except for green. Let's try it again with yellow. In this case, we can see that the yellow dye allows some of the red and green light to pass through it. Now, I've always found that light shadows and color mixing is a great introduction to light, but there's a lot more demonstrations that we can take a look at. So in a future video, we'll look at demonstrations dealing with refraction. We have homemade prisms, various types of lenses, We'll also take a look at reflection. We'll see how the shape of the surface determines where the light goes. We'll look at concave surfaces and convex surfaces. As always, I want to thank you for watching and I hope you'll come back and see me again. Okay, bye.